Emergency medicine. There's no time to waste and no time to think. A doctor's decision can mean life or death. Whether in the emergency room or just a routine operation that's gone wrong, under pressure, mistakes can be made. Dr. Bernard Baez is a first year anesthesiology student at the Mount Sinai Teaching Hospital in New York. Today he has two patients, both male, 20 to 30 ish, and usually fairly healthy. But one of his patients will die. Fortunately for Dr. Baez, that patient is Hal, a human simulator. The use of a simulator is revolutionary. In the past, we've always relied on patient interaction for our learning. Um, in the practice of emergency medicine, anesthesiology, bad things happen very quickly. You can't use those patient interactions to actually teach effectively. It would be malpractice to allow a resident in training to actually practice on someone who would have an untoward event if not cared for properly. The life-size mannequin, worth around a quarter of a million dollars, is no dummy. He's as close as you could get to the real thing. As you can see, um, the simulator looks like a human being. Um, he does breathe. In fact, he, just like real people, uses oxygen. He exhales carbon dioxide, so he actually breathes out. He's got pulses. You can feel pulses in, the, in, in his neck pulses, carotid pulses. He's got pulses in the wrists. But really, it's a sophisticated computer that works through complex mathematical models to replicate the way a human would respond to a particular event. Lidocaine's going in. For example, if a drug is injected. All the syringes are barcoded. The applicant or participant actually injects drugs into the simulator. That beep that you just heard actually says that the, si the simulator actually recognized the drug. The barcode said what drug was coming, and then the simulator behaves appropriately to the particular agent. There are over 80 different physiological parameters that can be manipulated to create an infinite number of patients or scenarios. From the beginning of the case, I already had trouble with making a seal around the face. N and now you're stuck with a purple Dr. Baez trains under Dr. Adam Levine, both in the real operating room and the simulated one. Your patient is a 23-year-old male who came in this morning for a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Uh, well, you could potentially Today, Dr. Levine will present doctors Barlow and Baez with a crisis. What they think is a routine anesthetic will go terribly wrong. Okay, Sarah, I'm going to put a mask over your face. What I would like you to do, lift up your chin and take some nice deep breaths. Under anesthetic, a patient cannot breathe on his own, so oxygen is given through a breathing tube. But Hal's airways are blocked. Meanwhile, this patient is nervous. His veins are constricted. Dr. Baez has trouble inserting an IV. Little tight, sorry. A medical emergency is now in full swing. Unable to secure an airway, the patient is losing oxygen fast. Not able. The doctors try a fiber optic tube with a camera attached to try and see their way through the obstruction. Suddenly, Hal stops breathing. No pulse. Start compression. We can ventilate this gentleman through here. In the real operating room, Dr. Baez has better luck finding a vein in the patient's other arm. He has no trouble with intubation. The patient is anesthetized and stable. Maybe 200. Hal, though, has died. Nothing. I have a pulse. A pulse? Good. Yeah. It feels very real. Everything that happens in there what could certainly happen in the same sequence in the OR. And it's as real as I want to make it, and I treat it as as it's the real thing. At this point, if we got him back like this, I would wake him up. He mm -hmm. does wake up, mm -hmm. and he's completely neurologically intact. He says, chest hurts. <laughs> the um, famous throat. Throat hurts a little, um, but he does wake up neurologically intact. Uh, but he, and he wants you guys to be his anesthesiologist when he comes back to the, uh, to the OR the next time. That's kind of thing you just can't practice in real life. Certainly, if there was a critical event, such as the one you saw in the simulator, I would have intervened and cared for the patient. You know, but at some point, Dr. Baez is going to be the attending anesthesiologist solely responsible for the care of that patient. Would you want him to be the first time, would, would you want it to be the first time he intervenes in a life-saving maneuver, the very first time he has to do it? You real, when you're in the OR, you really never get the opportunity as you're doing someone first for example, in this case, Adam, to stop you and ask you what you're doing, why you're doing it, and 
really make you think about every single step. Even though you know it's a, it's not a real patient, um, once you start getting into the actual simulation, um, that kind of goes to the back of your mind. And when you start hearing, you know, when you start getting into trouble, depending on whatever type of simulation you're running. Thankfully for this patient, everything was straightforward. But if it wasn't, Dr. Baez would handle the emergency with confidence, thanks to his skills as a doctor and with a little help from his friend.